How you doing, everybody? It's Max Vero from DexFXMarkets.com. Today is the 19th of March, 2021, and this is sort of your early weekly wrap-up. All right, everybody, so we're back. I'm joined with Jerry uh, from Data Division. How you doing, Jerry? One of our Good. Partners. How's it going? I'm oh, pretty good. Um, this week has been a tough week. Uh, and I say a tough week because we were we were not expecting the losses in the very beginning of the week, the how they were going. Uh, there was a few things that you and I had talked about within the process of uh, the signals and what was happening. I talked to Ron, of course. Uh, you guys have done a fabulous job looking and tracking data, making sure where everything was at. Um, let's talk for a second about daylight savings time um, and how that sort of worked into some of the stuff that happened in the very beginning of the week. Um, and you and I discussed, Jerry, that we thought that uh, it, it, it affected the signals for this week, but really only in the beginning part of, of the week, say, so that Sunday night to Monday morning. Is that about correct? Right. Uh, best we could tell, right? It looks like that uh, it affected our Sunday night, Monday morning. Our Sunday night, Monday morning. Yeah. So from that from that Sunday night Monday morning time period, let me grab the uh, right ones here. Here we are. I think I did grab the right ones. Two fourteen. Am I missing something? Oh, I turned all the way over to here. <laughs> there we go. Um, as of the two o'clock hour, we're about ninety two dollars in the hole um, from from what we have from the week. Uh, this first part of the week really kind of took us a little bit. Uh, gave us about two hundred nineteen dollars. Uh, in the hole from the very beginning part of the week. So it was a pretty tough week uh, to kind of get hit into. But we feel, uh, and again, this is not about excuses, right? This is about finding out what the data is worth. Remember, a lot of this data that we've we've accumulated, some speculative, some forward testing, and what have you, um, we can only test back a certain period of time. So we couldn't test back to the previous daylight savings time or the spring forward or the fall back or any other time, uh, really, because... We didn't have the data. Now we do, and this is good news. Even though that we're a little bit behind for this week, this is still good news because what did you call this, a flex week, basically? Right, yeah, we think so because, to your point, we don't have the data to look back on it. But Right. And that we see the, we see the success rates for certain hours and certain times over certain weeks, and now we're starting to get into that prime data of all most of the data Almost about half the data now. What are we, six weeks in for live data? Yes. For, okay. Six so we're about about halfway into our um, full 13-week process that we needed to get to. So we're right at that halfway mark. So if you're if you're just starting out in CDON and this is your first week in, so yeah, you have a loss your first coming weekend. We had a loss in the beginning of the month with uh, the NFP. So we learned a lot of stuff about the NFP at that time. That's about right, right? And then um, we 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 have a we have a week last we had a good week last week two hundred and ten which is good and remember the Zedon is not the save all it's not the one that's going to be making your, your majority of your money if you're here just to trade automated and set and forget then you're going to have to deal with the slow pace incremental crawl CVG all that kind of good stuff as we're always touting but the real solution for all of you is to learn how to trade using the Dex Atomics that's where the real money is being made right this is just supplemental money um, in that case. We decided that we were going to wait until uh, I was going to do a weekly wrap up at three o'clock because if we had a if we had a trade on because uh, Jerry's traveling and I wanted to make sure that we had some time to talk about this process. Um, collecting data for this system is it is it a tough venture for you, Jerry? When I mean I know it's numbers come easy to you, right? It, yeah, it, it's uh, very time consuming and you know. But it, it's good stuff. We're we're learning stuff every week, uh, right. and it's getting better. So uh, the the reward is you can see that this is going to be a game changer down the road for sure. Yes. Right now, how we're collecting data, we're using the system over on from. Now, here's a good part: we're using our own tools. Dexatomics is the biggest one that we're using the tools with to grab data, very specific data, not too many signals, not too not too little. Um, and we're using that process. What we're working on, and here's where the, the real power comes in, is that we need to know when we're using our indicators right now, we're not using statements from natives, right? And that's the thing that we really got to work on uh, is getting those statements directly inputted into the 
indicator called Dexatomics. I am working on that. I've gone dark over the last week or so, uh, creating a process, and it's going to take about another week to build, maybe even two. But once we get those statement prices in, injected into the system, we can then really see the simulated backtesting as true results because we know right now that the, the statements that we're showing, you know, from the HILT method, it are not really uh, statements that are over on Nadex, but they're close, two or three pips sometimes, sometimes four. But there's too many things that could go wrong with that process, right? We can get false data from that point. So once we get that data going into the indicator, I think our results are going to be showing a lot more uh, precise altitude, really, and to be able to get really good percentage rates for certain hours or certain time frames or certain pairs. Absolutely. And I think that yeah. that's what really is going to change the world for us, I think. Right, because there's there's some unknown, right, about mm -hmm. whether or not the signal price and the strike price strike price are close enough that it would hit the the thresholds that we're looking for. Right. Right. Well, there's some that would get picked up that we could count as wins that don't get really picked up because the price is too far away or the uh, statement price is too far away or the opposite. Some would get picked up um, or wouldn't get picked up because they, were they, they would lose, but they wouldn't lose down to a level that they would have gotten picked up in our system. So there really is uh, an unknown there. Once we get the statement prices over, we'll have a much better process um, uh, to be able to deal with. Uh, this week is I'm not I'm not happy with a lot of the results if you would would say but I'm I'm still okay with uh, the processes. All right, so we're we're sitting right now at about minus ninety two. Uh, this would actually change in this last hour because we had something else just happen that I wanted to let everybody know about, and this happened I think last week as well on a pair. Uh, and we're working on this process. Matt and myself have talked about this for the next release that's going to come out, um, is to when the signal fires, right? And this is not a Zedon thing. This is a Nadex thing. If I go to the website for, for Nadex and I put in, let's just say, I find a statement and I go to get into it and it's already out of the money, right? And let's just say the, the current market price for a sell is $67. Right, that's what happened with this last little trade for Euro USD. Let's say it's sixty-seven dollars, and I decide that I'm going to go with that sixty-seven that's there, and I go to put that price in, but the market's moving so fast that it drops down to fifty, uh, drops down to sixty-six, and it won't honor it because it can't go lower; it can only go better. It can't go worse into the trade; it can only go better in the trade. So it puts it as a working order in case it comes back up and hits that sixty-seven. That is. Uh, a problem for us. Why? Because we're using a limit order when it comes over. It's not a bad thing for the Zedon thing to be a limit order because if we came over to, because our system is all about the retracement, but sometimes we hit these, these out of the monies, if you will. So what Matt and I are going to be looking to build is the Zedon now to take charge and say, listen, when we first get here, if that price is a dollar or two more, okay, a dollar or two more then the out so if it's out of the money and it's a dollar or two more in the positive right so if it's like if we're doing a 45 if it's 47 then we use a market price to get that okay because that'll that'll pop it immediately right that'll put it in at 47 or if it's 67 or whatever but we have to have a minimum of that process being there so we because if, if we did it right if we said at 45 put a market price on then it would just put it in every single time so we need to know if it's better than 45 and then how much better than 45 does it need to be? And that's the thing, right? We're, we, we have to kind of start looking at that because we're losing a couple of trades. Like this last one would have been a good sort of bringing us almost a break even, uh, one trade off one minus one delta um, if, if it were to win from that point. The other is that you would have to sit and watch it the entire time. That's about right, Jerry? Right, right. It's, it's moving up, but I don't think it's going to fill still. But if it does fill now, I'm, yeah. It'd be it'd be it'd be a, an edge of the cedar kind of thing. It'll be an edge of the cedar, yeah. You don't yeah. want to watch it. Yeah. So the point being is that this week, even if we do win another one in the three o'clock hour, uh, it'll still kind of bring us really close to the break even. I see this as a it, it is a loss. It is a, a negative in the column, but it's one that's very very close. And 
Now that we have information about the Dex Delta and the Daylight Saving Time system, I'm going to see, try to pull up some other data uh, to see what, you know, we, we got good data from this point. Um, Ron? Uh, every week, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, please. Uh, every week we get better data about forward uh, actual uh, data instead of simulated data. The yeah. other thing I'd like to say, and I, I don't want to jump ahead if, you, if I was, but outside of Monday, Monday was 0 and 4. So Monday right. was, we were 219 in the hole. Right. If you took that and just say that uh, maybe we learn from this, and we don't know, it's one instance, so we need to mm -hmm. say, we need to wait. But we learned that maybe on the Monday, the Sunday to Monday of daylight saving times, we just don't trade, or we trade right. very conservative. Right, but we wait we until Tuesday. Trades. Right, yeah. we, we lost four trades. Had we not lost those four trades, had we not traded that Monday at all, we'd be positive right now. Yeah, we would be up about 120 something dollars, yeah. In the, the right. Market. And so Wednesday was a break even day. Thursday was just down uh, a little bit. But um, uh, and then Friday is turning into a, to a good day right now. We're three and oh on Friday. So Monday was certainly an anomaly is what mm -hmm. I'm going to call it. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. And we'll know later as we look into it, if, if it was really to do with daylight savings time from a signal standpoint. I don't yeah. think so. But we'll find out. But I right. think it was more of a shift of people's habits mm -hmm. uh, come, uh, of the ebb and flow of the market. And, you know, so it's, it's either way. I know it's, it's a loss and some people are, 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 you know, they don't like that. I don't like it either. I'm trading alongside of, of everybody else. Yeah, we all, but yeah. The, 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 so the, but the learning point is it costs us a little bit here to learn that going forward, we may need to just not trade that day. And that's sure. When not to trade is sometimes just as important as when to trade. This is something we've always tried to teach, you know, when in doubt, stay out kind of mentality. Right. But what I want everybody to realize is that if you're listening to this, and you're like, damn, I had a bad week and I can't really take this and I got to go figure something else out. Don't you dare move. You stay exactly where you're at. Last week was a win. It's not like three weeks in a row we're having losses or anything else. Last week was a win. We had a little loss the previous week. You know, but we made up for that so far for the month where we are for, for March. We're hoping for a good coming week here. Um, for the last six weeks, we're in the positive over 500. So I know, for fact, as we progress further into the next week or so, the DEX Delta signals will get even better with the injection of the Natick statements being on the system. We'll be able to finite the data more. We'll be able to create more analysis around that process and really hone them in. So don't go anywhere. This isn't, this isn't something that you're here for the daily result. You're here for a monthly, a quarterly, a half a year, three quarters, and a year, right? And I can tell you right now, because I'm sitting here with you trading. So is Jerry, and so is Ron, and everybody else who's, who, who's in here. We're putting our money where our mouth is. Now, the Dex Delta signals is only one little tiny part. The real power, if you'll see in the Dex Atomics chat room and results that we're going to be putting out, the people that are trading manual are blowing us away in Dex Delta signals. But don't let that discourage you. If, you. if you don't have time to trade, if you don't have time to sit in front of your computer, we do have other things that are coming on. We are profusely pushing uh, a process of testing on our five-minute systems as well. Why haven't I removed five-minute systems? Because they don't work. Apparently, everybody says they don't work. Well, they actually do, but you've got to really be able to trade them in a certain way. So a lot of good things are coming. So if you're if you're if you're sort of sitting waiting for you know Dex Delta signals to make you a million dollars tomorrow, we have work to do. And we're gonna get there. Thanks to people like Jerry and Ron and David and other people who are in there collecting this data, doing things that if you tried to do this, you'd have to spend at least a month learning the program and another month to even collect the data. Okay. And I can tell you right now with the with what's gonna be coming with data collection. We're going to be putting out some programs that are going to help you look for some of your own golden signals and what you're going to be trading with that. And even if it's two or three hours a day, you're going to be doing pretty good. Um, again, I think uh, we had a few people hit the thousand plus mark um, in, in manual signals. I came close on my manual side. It came up to $800 this, this month, but I also I was distracted with a lot of stuff that I had to do. Okay, um, Jerry, you have anything to add this week? No, I, I said my piece about it, and I completely agree with you. I, I just believe that um, it was like this this week. It was it started off tough, but now it's turned out to be just an okay week, you know, a little bit small loss. But 
uh, a good learning experience. And I, I have a lot of confidence in the signals. We've gone through a lot of back testing mm -hmm. and we know that back testing is a reflection of forward testing to some degree. How much percentage of the degree? Yeah. 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 We, we learned that it was like almost 30% of what the, the functionality of what back testing is to live. And with those numbers, they're still good. Um, with some nuances, things ebb and flow, they go up and down. It's just like the market, right? But now that we're starting to see where are the golden signals, where are the ones that have like 10, 20, 30 signals on it and they're 80, 90% success rates. So that's what, what we're really hoping on. When we get to the live, full live interjected data, full forward testing, that's where the real power. Another six weeks, seven weeks in that, uh, and then we're really golden. We're taking this pattern that we have for signals and applying it to a long-term forward testing, no simulated data. But even then, simulated data is skewed now. But when we come out with that new Nadex statement injection system into the indicator, simulated data is only going to be off because right now it's off about 70%. So we're getting 30% results. When we inject that data, we're only going to be off like 1%, 2% at that point. And that's where I really want to get to, to see where our real numbers are that we can depend on. All right, everybody. I appreciate you being here this week and sticking out with us. Jerry, thank you very much. I know you're traveling. You got something. Ron's traveling. Everybody's traveling this week. Guys got cabin fever. Had to get out, I guess. But uh, I appreciate all, all the work you've done, bud. Thanks, Max. All right. That's it for us. We're going to end out early. Hopefully, hopefully we have a three o'clock. If we do, when we come out on Sunday with uh, maybe a Sunday sideshow kind of thing, I think, uh, or even. Something on Monday, I'll have another little event that we're going to be talking about, some stuff that's going to be released. But we'll see you then. This has been the weekly wrap-up with Max and Jerry. We'll see you next time. And as always, trade well.